it's coming off. And um, I've had long hair ever since my hair fell out in 2014. It's just been like a security blanket, but I do feel like it's time for a change. It happened. The fact that this is someone's entire ponytail that I will be donating, by the way. Are we ready? Are we ready? It's all gone. <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy. I've been living a plant-based lifestyle for the last seven years and striven towards a more intentional and low waste one for the last four. Now I'm on a mission to step outside my comfort zones and live life to its fullest. By living intentionally, moving my body, living alone, hiking, skiing, backpacking, and getting outside as much as I can. And figuring out my 20s one day at a time. Oh, and this is Rue. She's a spunky little handful. Hit subscribe and come along for the ride. And above all else, to whomever is hearing this, thank you for being you. The world needs your uniqueness. So, if you remember last week, I decided to completely rearrange my home in the spirit of the new year. And a few weeks before that, I began DIYing some things for my little kitchen nook just to try to make it cozy and homey. Today's goal is to continue both of those little renovations, make it just a little bit cozier in here, and get those projects further along. And we have a lot of ground to cover, so much so that I made myself a list. Let's see what we can get done in 24 hours. First on the list is new kitchen knobs. One of my all-time favorite ways to mix up a space is collecting funky knobs. I replaced all the knobs on my childhood dresser 13 years ago, and I still think it looks jazzy and unique. Most rental apartments come with boring knobs, typically the standard silver ones, and they all screw off and can easily be replaced with something unique. And the best part about this renter-friendly hack is that you can collect funky knobs over time and then bring them with you from apartment to apartment. So last week when I stopped in the reuse store, I found a few vintage unique ones that I think will give this kitchen a good start. And the total for 10 knobs? $12. Can't beat that. Reuse, repair, recycle, reward. That was cheesy, wasn't it? Finally sold these lamps. Don't get me wrong, they're beautiful. I have a second one in my bedroom. I just didn't really have a spot for a matching set of them in this apartment, so. We're saying goodbye. Someone's coming to pick them both up right now. And I'm running late. She's gonna be outside in like a minute. Moving on to the entryway table. This one I actually got a jump start on last night. I did a DIY inside, I discovered the genius tool of using the dog crate as uh, the perfect aeration station for any of the wood stain that needs to dry. <laughs> never say I never gave you apartment friendly DIY hacks that are probably five minute craft approved. <laughs> I just stayed in this first piece of lumber and it's gonna dry now. I don't know if you remember, but a couple of episodes ago when I picked up the first set of lumber, they had all this scrap lumber from other people's cuts that they were getting rid of. And I think I wanna make Rue like a little elevated dog bowl stand out of them. She has just a thrifted little tray and two bowls from the thrift store. I think it'd be really cute if she had her own little corners. That's the plan with this. I found these at the craft store, so these are gonna be like the little legs for the table. Table. Dish stand. Cute. That's the easy one. Their work ethic and their outlook on life. Turn the camera, I don't even know what that is or how I'm meant to do that. And now it's time to start on the entryway table. If you remember, we started doing that last week. And even though I was just putting the pieces back together on this one and after I'd stained it, I was a little nervous I'd made the wrong decision to round the corners and change the wood's color. But sometimes you just have to trust your gut and see if it pans out. I still have this little frame that I got at the thrift store a couple weeks ago. It's so tiny. I need to figure out what I want to put in this. I'm gonna go on a mad hunt through my apartment. <laughs> 
Oh, these little pictures. Oh. Okay, well, if this isn't perfect, it's a little picture of my sister and I. Just ready for Valentine's Day. Look at us go. That was so unplanned. I don't know how I had something that was like this exact size. Look, Rufus. And I think this one came out pretty dang good, if I do say so myself, for something that cost me $10 to make and minimal effort. Done. Back to business, baby. Oh, the infamous kitchen nook. While I was really stoked on how the first renos in this corner looked, it was missing something functionally. There are so many adorable DIYs out there that are sure as heck stunning. Don't get me wrong, but if the space doesn't work from a day-to-day -day practical point, if you still have small objects that don't have a home or you need to scoot around something to get by it, then it's not really cute. The beauty of a space or an outfit or anything really is having the balance between art, beauty, and function, in my humble opinion. And sometimes being intentional with your space and your time means adding rather than subtracting. So I copied and made a shorter version of the shelf we made a few weeks ago because over time this corner has become my charging station so any of those devices have a home. I can add a table lamp to brighten the space, mail, and other odd bits that find themselves on this teeny, teeny, teeny tiny table have a home so that the table can still be used functionally without needing to move the planty centerpiece anytime you want to sit and work at the table. I never thought I would be the type of person who would like want to make their own shelves. I'm more of like an upcycler rather than making things completely from scratch. It's like kind of rewarding to sand my own wood. I feel bad for the environment so I won't do it all the time, but <laughs> growth happens when we do new things, friends. Smooth. <laughs> this might be the task I'm the most excited for. Time to make Rue's dog bowl stand. <laughs> Before bed, I had a wild idea for an upcycle and by golly, it might even work. And I thought that was gonna be the craziest extent of the night until I got wind of some news. Psst. Hey, two things. One, did you know that Valentine's Day is coming up? And two, this portion of the video is sponsored by our faves over at Climeworks. So do I have some good news for you. <laughs> Did you know that roses aren't in season this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere? So in the spirit of Valentine's Day, where 250 million roses are sold, which have to be imported from across the world and then shipped around the country in refrigerated trucks that use 25% more fuel than normal trucks. So oh boy, do I have the best sustainable holiday Valentine's gift idea for you ever to be heard of? Wholesome really, if you will. Climeworks is the leading direct air capture service, which means that in using their direct air capture technology, their plants remove carbon dioxide from the air. Permanently. All of their machines are powered by renewable energy, have gray emissions below 10%, and essentially pull carbon dioxide out of the air, capture it, and return it into the ground's minerals, or reuse it. Similar to how trees capture carbon through reforestation or afforestation, Climeworks technology does the same thing, but you don't have to wait for the tree to mature, and it uses less resources in doing so. And not only do their subscriptions obviously benefit the planet, they're a bonus for last minute gifters like myself, every holiday, every birthday, everything. I will never be prepared ahead of time. Just letting you know to all of my friends, family, and loved ones, I'm so sorry. To give the gift of carbon removal this Valentine's Day, all you have to do is head online, select the gift that you'd like to give. You can even personalize a little message and then schedule to send it whenever you'd like. So that means you can do it right up until the last minute. And if you don't wanna stop after giving your gift, you can also head over to Climeworks website where you can sign up for one of their subscriptions to remove carbon throughout the rest of the year. And then at the end of the year, it's always exciting. They'll let you know how much carbon dioxide they've removed from the air in your name that year. A famous poet once said, love does not need to be wasteful. And I'm not sure why I have a fake microphone in front of my hand. And I'm also pretty sure no poet has ever said that before. But it is a super unique gift that you cannot get anywhere else. So head to gift.climeworks.com slash Sedona Christina to gift sustainable love this holiday season. And if you use code Sedona Christina 15 by the end of the month, Climeworks will cover 15% of your purchase. Happy love season. It's always love season though, I feel like. Holy heck, holy heck, holy heck. 
when I say that things took a turn last night. After I turned the camera off last night, I went on Facebook Marketplace and found my dream coffee table. I was not expecting to find one at all anytime soon because I've been hunting forever. I knew if I kept my eye out though, I would find what I was looking for. I messaged the owner as fast as I even possibly could and went and picked it up last night. When I say that I found the original table for $330 and there are other people selling the exact table for $200 and she sold it for $40? Just like a moment of silence here. She said that her kids kept hitting their head on it. I don't have that problem. Rufus, listen closely. No hitting your head on the coffee table, okay? Okay. I do have to figure out how I'm getting it out of the car by myself though, because her husband helped me put it in the car. So if you ever watch my videos, cause you're not sure if you want to live alone, just know that for the most part, it's pretty groovy, pretty great, but sometimes you need help moving furniture. Sometimes there is a task that may be too grand for one human being. This will not be one of those tasks. I am determined today. Woo! Amazing! Every space I've ever lived in, I've never put a nail in the wall. Mostly because my fear told me that repairing the wall at the end of the lease was too large of a task, when in reality it takes five minutes and a five dollar pot of patch. And by golly, I cannot describe to you the feeling of finally giving the art I've collected over the years a home. I thrifted these shelves three years ago, and they sat under my bed until now. And if there's something that I personally feel strong about in this big, wild, vast universe we live in, it's that having a space that feels welcoming will completely reboot my mental health. And so far, simply adding a few things to the wall, hanging the old paper lantern lamp, and a couple of thrifted rugs have been the biggest impact by far. Feeling cozy in your space definitely takes a bit of intention, but in my experience, it's often not as daunting and as much effort as you thought it was before you started. It looks so good. <laughs> having a little fun with it. I had this old banner of repurposed fabric from a while ago and I decided to make Rue a little corner. I made a little mock-up sign with one of the scrap pieces of wood that I'll probably DIY and make into something a little bit nicer in the future. But for now, her hidden little oasis, even though she doesn't really use her crate as much as she likes to use the couch, just knowing she has this space brings me joy. to kill. I did, however, thrift this little basket on Facebook Marketplace a couple weeks ago, because apparently I never go to the thrift store anymore. I'm solely finding things on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. It's just so easy. In my defense, my favorite thrift store in the city closed like three years ago, and it's never been the same since. But I finally want to find this baby a home and start rehabbing her. 
The other night, I had an idea to craft a plant hanger out of the leftover materials laying around the house. In part so they don't go to waste, but also to save some money. I don't know if this is going to be a good idea or a bad idea, but we're giving it a shot anyways. Using leftover dowel from the windowsill shelf that we made a few weeks ago and the last of the shelving brackets, I chopped the dowel to size and carved a divot using my camping axe, of all things, it was really the only thing I had, so that the hanging basket won't slide off. Then I glued it to the bracket and drilled everything into place once it was on the wall. And voila! Not too shabby. I'd considered staining the wood as well, but I figured I'd make sure the idea would work first, and I don't think it looks half bad. I'm proud to say that this space has every single shade of wood ever imaginable. And I like it that way. Mix and match, baby. This is really dorky of me. Also, please excuse, I have to put all these dishes away. Just, let's, we're just gonna ignore those. Okay, um, this is super dorky of me, but as I said earlier, this corner just amasses things that are being charged. I just have a lot of like small little things that need to be charged, whether it's a light or a microphone or a GoPro or a drone or my camera or my phone, just a lot of little tiny things. So I wanted to give them a little home that they could be charged in. It was supposed to be a dresser that I had over there, but I couldn't really figure out how to get the cable brought into the dresser so that it wasn't hanging out and like just throughout the middle of my living room. So it was. I don't know, this is not gonna be finalized. I'm sure I'll come up with something better in the future. Or maybe I'll thrift a tray or a dish for them to sit on. If anybody has any ideas, let me know. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of this new shelf is that I made sure to leave enough space in between the shelf and the wall to hide cords behind, and it's oh so satisfying. I do need to figure out what I'm gonna do about cord management below, though. Not bad for a couple days of progress. With the little elbow grease, everything is slowly coming together. Every time I've walked in and out of my home for the last 24 hours, I keep looking around and can't believe I get to come home to this cozy den. I know I said this last time, but it's wild what a little rearranging and mostly hanging of art can do. And the coffee table has been oh so lovely for sitting on the floor with my work, which I, the weirdo, thoroughly enjoy. It might be the luckiest secondhand find I've ever found. to join me next time as I head into the mountains, upcycle an Ikea hack, the standing floor mirror, get thrifting again, and the microwave saga really starts to heat up. See you next time. Thank you for being you. Love you.